Hello and welcome to the Gallant Few Rangers podcast. My name is Mason Stewart and I'll be your host for another Premier League show. With me tonight, I've got the two favourite Gallant Few odders, I'd say. Um, first up, we've got Jamie. How are you, Jamie? I'm all good, mate. Mason, thank you very much. It's always nice to get you back. I don't have to fill in for you. I can concentrate on uh, answering questions rather than coming up with questions. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be a tough gig at times. Um, tough gig. <laughs> tough gig talking about my own team, but I quite enjoy this one, I've got to be honest. Um, but next up, we've got Johnny as well making his second appearance. How are you, Johnny? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, Mason. Um, enjoyed it last week. It's, it's nice to be to be back on and have somebody else different hosting. Jamie was wobbling a wee bit last week, so it's nice. <laughs> Usual, <isn't it? laughs> <Only kidding. laughs> No, nice to have you on. So, so Jamie, we'll, we'll start off with uh, Man City being crowned champions then, um, obviously from the pod last week. I'm sure, you know, I, I know you did speak about Pep Guardiola, um, exp- you know, pointing to the fans saying two more wins, where they didn't have to kick a ball again. Um <laughs> They won the league. Typical Arsenal. We'll come on to Arsenal a, a little bit in a little in a little while. But um, Man City, then champions. They've been relentless. I think that's twelve Premier League wins in a row, uh, mm-hmm. fifteen unbeaten in, in all competitions. Um, they made I don't know, was it eight changes to the team that still went and beat Chelsea quite comfortably at the weekend. It, I think it just sort of sums up their season. It, in the end, um, once Pep stopped playing around with his team, they 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 were. For me, their far and best team in England uh, at the moment. Yeah, it was kind of a weird one because, like, you know, it's kind of roundabout now that you start to see managers start to shoehorn players in so they can get themselves qualification for a medal if they're going to win the league. Pep didn't do that. I think he just did it just to take the piss out of Chelsea, if I'm all honest. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they'd already, they'd already won it so many. As you said, they'd already won 11 on the spin. There was an expectation that they, they would probably rest either Kevin De Bruyne or Haaland, knowing the full well they've got the Champions League. But to then bring on, like, about another, as you said, seven changes or something, including the goalkeeper, and you just thought, they're either going to go down in the damn squib right now and just go, well, we didn't need to win it anyway, or they're just going to take the piss. Um, however, I, I, I didn't realise until the end of the game that actually that's, if I'm right, that's the fourth for the fifth game versus Chelsea where it's finished only 1-0. So actually that scoreline shouldn't be a surprise. I think everybody had it for like over two, two and a half goals or something, but actually you look back, it's been 1-0 for like four games in a row. So um, I don't think there's too much to say about the performance. Um, because the performance was probably for anybody that watched it in the Champions League game. You know, that was probably one of the best games for a long time. I didn't expect much from the league game. But as you said, I think it was more about Arsenal throwing it away than it was the uh, City kind of taking the pass, really. No, no, absolutely. And, and you're right, Jamie, that's uh, City have beaten Chelsea in the last six games without conceding a goal. Uh, and as you said, four of the six was 1-0. So, uh, <laughs> you know what to put on early next yeah. season when they meet again. Um, Johnny, so what's your thoughts on City then? Obviously, as we said, you know, champions, crown champions, and um, is the treble treble are realistic? I can't see, I can't see him slipping up in, in that. You never know what happens in finals, but I, I think it's it's gonna it's gonna be their year. They they do it. It's looking very very likely. Probably the the best chance I've had, definitely in terms of Champions League. Anyway, you know, the, they've they've been relatively close, but they always seem to. The ball goes a wee bit towards the back end, but they seem definitely a different uh, level in momentum this year. Uh, touching on what you had said at the weekend when they they just turned up against Chelsea, it was almost it was you know it was a formality, and as you said, they didn't really have to do much because the league was already in the bag. But the the bench at the weekend was absolutely obscene. Um, I actually sketched it the day, so we were talking Diaz, Ederson, Gundogan, uh, Bernardo Silva, Stones, Haaland, KDB, Rodri and Grealish all on the bench and they still done it at a canter. Disgusting, um, isn't it? The, it's the depth, the depth is unreal and that's the big difference with what's happened in the outcome of the league and how they've been so dominant because you can take pretty much any of the top players for that team with an injury or even just dropping them and replace them in a heartbeat, and you probably won't see much of a difference. Uh, and I don't think there's any other club in England at the moment that has that in terms of depth. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they've been they've been excellent, and they should do it. The only thing I would maybe question is it's been a long season, it always is. That's the league done. 
do they keep that momentum or does there maybe a wee bit of a dip, a wee bit of, you know, the exhale, the job's done, but still two massive games to go. I don't know. It's unlikely, but there is a possibility. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. As I said, finals, anything can happen, but I don't think they'll get a better opportunity to to, to do it and, and match that Man United team that, that um, well, Man United, Man United fans like to bang on about for, for so long. So. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, Jamie, I don't think we need to t- touch on Chelsea. That's 15. They've lost in the Premier League now. Um, must be their high, well, one of their highest in the in the Premier League. A- absolute uh, shambles. But but I'll, I'll come to you on Arsenal then, and, and, and they, you know, uh, lost at the weekend to Forest on on Saturday night, which meant Man City were champions. Arsenal now have lost three of their last five Premier League games. And it just for me, I don't want to call them butlers because I think that's a little bit harsh. I, think, I do think they've had domestically a really good season. If you'd have said to, to me that they'll finish second sort of comfortably and have the season, I don't think I'd have believed you at the start of the season. So I don't really want to call them butlers, but they just lacked that that squad depth in the end and um, that experience to to really, you know, you look at the points they've dropped and, and the performances as well. It's, have been in the end. I think if you are an Arsenal fan, you can't help but feel really, really disappointed. I think, <clears throat> I think going into the game, um, I didn't expect Arsenal to get a win from the game. I actually had it down as a draw in my own predictions um, because you know Forest have had a better form. They needed that point to kind of secure their the, their own their own status, and everything pointed to them just kind of doing that. The momentum swung with City, um, so. You know, Arsenal were Arsenal. I mean, do you remember about four weeks ago? We were saying Arsenal can't afford to drop our point, and they've dropped. You know, as you said, they've dropped three games in the last so many that you know it's not even. They've not even went ahead in those games and lost them. They've actually just flat out lost them. You go back two months ago, and they were letting two goal leads slip. You know, two games in a row. I'm I'm going to go. I'm going different. I'm going to say they did bottle it. I, it's not like you know. We, I think it was was it the beginning of February. They were ten points clear. Yeah, it was ten points clear, yeah. and all the talk was everybody. Even we started to turn around and say, Do "You know what? They actually might have this." You and you and they, Grant. I'm going to throw yeah. that. That was you and yeah. Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I know you had your little colours changed in the background, <laughs> um, but but I I would say that you know that this will go down as an experience for them. But for me, they did let it go. It was in their control. City have been relentless, absolutely. But Arsenal were relentless in the beginning of the season. They weren't relentless in the second half of the season. Now, there's a lot of talk being made about Saliba being out. Now, I get that. But it took him like five games to drop Rob Holden, you know, and shake it up. So those are their own decisions. Um, you know, they, they, they haven't had the depth where Gabriel Jesus wasn't playing. They've had to rely on, you know, the, the Niketia um, or Reese Nelson, who have had good seasons, but not... You know, they're not banging 10 goals in a season or anything. So, um, yeah, I think this will just go down as a very big experience for the team. But apart from that, I think they get they, they get in the own plaudits, which are they finish second in the league. Simple as that. But bearing in mind, if they, even if they win the, net, the last game, <clears throat> I might be wrong on that. I think they're only finishing 84 points. You know, that... <laughs> City and Liverpool, now I'm going to, you know, I've always bring it back to Liverpool, always try and do, but you look at the last three or four seasons, every league's been won with 92, 93, 99 points. Arsenal are, four, Arsenal are getting there with 84. That's, you know, not exactly up there as some of the greatest teams that they were being projected as at the beginning of the season. They had a massively great start. They've just tailed off. They really have. Craig, what's your thoughts on, on Arsenal in the end? Uh, would you agree there with Jamie and you would say that they ended up bottling it. I mean, I, I think they hit 50 points at the halfway season and I think no team's ever not gone on to win the Premier League hitting that point total. So yeah. there, is a, there is definitely a case for it. W- would you agree with that? Um, I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, I kind of agree with you. I think it would be quite harsh. They do have uh, a thin squad compared to the, the rest of the teams up there. Well, the majority of um I was really against when people were saying it was because Saliba had got injured. I'd say it's the same to Jamie. I thought that there was far too much put on that. 
and I was looking at it again today and looking when it did tail off and there is it can't all be that you can't all put it on one player's injury it shouldn't matter who the player is a squad uh, sorry a, a team of that size it should not factor but they did it wasn't even just a tail off was it it was like it was a spiral um mm-hmm. i think that's 15 points dropped in the last eight league games i mean that's that's poor and it's just completely went but i wouldn't put on injury it's probably a bit of both i think maybe a wee bit of nerves a wee bit of I don't know if he's wanting to say bottle and they do not have the depth i mean as you just said they were using holding as cover they don't have anybody to bring in and um, whereas when you look where man city are and the momentum they built up as i said just a wee while ago they can lose three four players and you, you won't see a difference whereas if arsenal lose one maybe two they go it's like a different team mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that, you're absolutely spot on and jamie before we sort of move on to i we've got to touch on on forest um you know Brilliant. yeah Arsenal. I see. I see a lot of videos. Actually, Arsenal fans saying that that was the best atmosphere they've experienced this season. Um, I, I, I'll admit, I, I, I thought Forest were, were one that was definitely going to go down. Sort of a month, six weeks ago, and they, I think that was their first clean sheet in God knows how long. Um, but their home forms kept them up in the end, and, and, and fair play. Yeah, and I think I think the last three games, a uh, one has got five goals. You know, so mm. so again, that's a that's a big factor for them. He's been out injured quite a lot this season, but he's actually got his fair share of goals. He's kind of one of these players. One week he scores a Lukaku esque goal, and the next week he gets these double deflections that come off his shin and go in. So, but as a striker, you'll take them. I'm probably more impressed. Excuse me, I was more impressed with one player, and I, I've got to admit, when they signed him and the, the fee they paid for him, they paid forty million for more than Gibbs White. I thought that's massively overpriced for a lad that, let's face it, was only just cutting about the, the Wolf squad. Um, he's been brilliant. You know, he's been absolutely top notch, especially since Christmas. He's probably stepped up a lot. Since they dropped Shelby, Lingard doesn't get a touch in the game. You know, the amount of money that they're spending on that kid and only getting out of him as TikTok dances at half time. But Morgan gives weights, like, he's proper putting on a shift. I've really, really started to grow to like this kid. Um, mm. He's uh, he's he's doing the hard shit, and make, you know, f- elegantly and fluently and attackingly, and he's getting you know he's getting goals, he's getting assists, and no, he's 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 a proper grafter. I really like him, and I think a lot of it has got to do with him um, leading the charge, if you like. Yeah, jo- Johnny, what would you think of that? Would you agree with that? See, um, <laughs> Morgan was uh, so I, I agree with Jamie. I thought the the money they paid for him at the time was was nuts. I couldn't really understand it. Obviously, I think he was on loan at Sheffield United at the time, so. Mm-hmm. To be honest, didn't watch a lot of a championship football, but I just thought that was crazy money. Wolf seemed quite happy to take it as well. But um, yeah, like sort of second half of the season, I've been really impressed. And now I'm kind of thinking, I wonder where he goes, sort of, you know, where his next move is, because I think some games he, he's looked, you know, best player on the pitch. Yeah, I, I agree with what he said. I'm I, I'm actually happy to see Forrest stay up. I think it's uh, every time you see, especially home games, it's the kind of atmosphere you want to be involved in, and it's probably as a player what you want to be there, be involved in that. So they did sign a lot of dross. Some, you know, there was a lot of money spent on some absolute mess. But Gibbs away, yeah, I would agree. Fee was really bad, but looking at where they are now and how much they're going to save by not going down, um, you'd probably say it was a bit of a stupid business because he, he's been excellent, and he has dragged them. He, he, his work rate is incredible. Um, I think when you're down there, you need a couple of players, you know, that, that that don't shirk and drag everybody else along when it's needed. He definitely does that. So yeah, happy to see them stay up, and I think they're well worth it. No, absolutely, and they're the type of football club you, you to be honest, you know, you do want to see in the Premier League. They've got a great fan base, you know, a good stadium. And, and a, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so so well done to, to Forrest. But Johnny, I'll come to you first on, on this one. Newcastle uh, have got Champions League football next season. Um, <laughs> Jamie, don't seem too happy about that one. But um, they, that last night against Leicester, they, uh, I don't know how they didn't score. I think I think they, they, they were purposely in the post, in the woodwork. It was it was constant. But but over the course of the season, you can't knock Newcastle and and the achievement. I know they've spent money since the takeover and like everyone else in the top five, six, really. But 
you know, I've been really impressed with their recruitment, I think, and, and what they've got for their money. Um, I think they they could be a, a, an even, you know, better force uh, next season. Yeah, I think they're definitely on the, the path. You can see what they're trying to do. Um, they could, I mean, I don't think they spent huge amounts. I mean, when you look at what some other clubs have done and how poorly they've done, um, I think the signings they brought in were really astute. Uh, we touched on it last week. It was that there were players who kind of eyebrow raising. You would have thought, why Why are they bringing in whoever um, if they want to play up, uh, try and reach a new level? And But these players, it's like they've took journeymen and made them into, well, Champions League players, which they're going to be. But I, I think they've done great. I think Howe's done well. I think he deserves a lot of credit. Um, I wouldn't say there's huge stars in that squad. It's players who you would have probably said are somewhere in the middle, and they seem to have found a new, uh, a different gear, a different level, if you like. Um, so yeah, I'm really impressed with them. I'm impressed with how and the way they went about their business. I think if they stay on that track, they're, they're going to be stronger next year. They can spend a bit more money. Um, I think uh, I think they're going places. Yeah, no, I've got to agree with that. And that's the first time Newcastle have qualified for the Champions League since 2002. 2003 so um yeah excellent achievement but jamie i want to come to you on on leicester uh last night um james madison harvey barnes left out starting 11 which i've got to be honest is a little bit amused by that one um their performance you know they worked extremely hard you know all game to be fair they were very defensive um but there was a point in the game where i thought right you've got to go for this and, and try and win it but it looked like they were pretty content to make sure they just come out of there with something. I mean, it does yeah. obviously give them hope going into the last game of the season, but uh, Dean Smith, I mean, I think me and you at the time when he was appointed both raised our eyebrows and I don't see him getting out of uh, this one. I think, it's, so, kind of like, John, I'll tell you, like, pretty much, um, man, no Madison, no Bonds, we were like, what is he doing? Like, surely, so it, could, it screams that there's been a fallout in the midweek and he's kind of putting his marker down I don't think he's got a luxury, but he kind of come out at the end of it. And um, when he came out in the press conference at the end and they asked him that, and he said he was quite brutally honest. And he said that it wasn't labelled for these two players, but in the last two games, he's been 3-1 down, or I think it was like 5-2 they were down, and they were looking at bringing on options, and they didn't have the right options to bring on and try and inject a bit in it. And he said, what I wanted to do was just shorten it up, tighten it up, and then if we can hold out, then bring on our attackers, which means that we can then go for it. And to some extent, they almost did that. Um, Johnny, I'll tell you, it was funny, like last night at half time, Skybit, they were doing um, wow. a crazy offer. They got a crazy offer where, because Leicester hadn't had a shot, never mind a shot on target for the first, whole first half. And for the second half, they were offering odds of 66 to 1 for the Leicester to not, to see it out without a shot. So I posted on WhatsApp and me and Johnny jumped on it thinking, right, Leicester are absolutely honking here. <laughs> then he brings Madison and Bonds on him. I'm going, oh, fuck, here he comes. The 92nd minute, Timothy Constania gets a fucking shot off, and you're going, there goes my bet, right down the pan. But they were so close to it, and that actually shows you the fine margins that Leicester were honking for a whole 90 minutes, but actually all they were doing was defending for their lives. They were in a scrap. Newcastle didn't need to win the game. They really didn't. They just needed to secure that point, if you like. Um he brought on the changes. It did make him go forward a little bit more. They got a shot away. But to register one shot on the 92nd minute and a whole of a game, if that was any other point in the season, they'd be calling for that manager's head, in my opinion. They just don't have that luxury at the moment. Um, and, uh, you know, it's now out of their hands, to put it bluntly. Um, they, they, I think, am I right in thinking their goal difference is three goals diff uh, less, or three goals more than Everton's? So... You know, they're not only hoping to a win, they're hoping there's a miracle in another game as well, really just to kind of get themselves out of this. But they definitely look doomed. Um, they, you know, after last night's point, um, I don't see them getting much out of it at all. Do you know, it's a, it's a really good point, uh, Tammy, but do you know, like, that's their first uh, clean sheet in in two Premier League games where they beat West Ham 2-0 in November. I was actually at that game. That was the last game before the World Cup. And I watched Leicester that day and I thought, they look brilliant. Like they were, mm -hmm. they going forward. Madison was the best player on the pitch, and then he went mm -hmm. off injured. But and then you know, so Dean Smith going in there, and you haven't kept clean sheets. The way they played last night, if he'd have done that when he went in there, I'd have gone, 
fair enough. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's building from the back, but they've took like beating after beating, and then with two games to go when they badly need points, he's shut up, shut down. Shop, shop. Like, yeah. Like I think he's just throwing darts, mate, and he's just seeing which one hits. <laughs> which one <know>? ones? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I think I think they're yeah they're, they're struggling big, big time. It is mad because if you think about it, um, they I think like I mentioned before their summer coming into the season was based on improving their defense. So they went to and brought Walt Fay, who scored twice for Liverpool uh, in that game. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They went to and bought the lads after the World Cup was at Suter um yeah. from Stoke City. Like yeah. they've put investments into that into that into the defensive side of the game, but they're they've been really hot. And and you know what? Like I heard it on on another podcast and it trying to take you back. Go back to this time last season and there was talk of Cashbush Michael leaving. Johnny, you'll remember this when we talked about this and we going, what is that? He's Mr. Lester. That makes absolutely no sense. He's their captain. He's the He's their stalwart. He's the one in the changing rooms that you would expect. He's the vocal. He's the front face of it. To let him go the way they did, scream like there was something going on in the background that wasn't obviously yeah. settling well. And it's it's probably now panned out the whole season exactly like that as a result of him moving on. I think it's, uh, I've touched on it. I say that a couple of times. But there's something something yeah. more that we're not seeing at Leicester. Maybe it's an owner thing or what. I don't know. But yeah, they are in trouble. They are, mate. They are. Johnny, uh, Brighton uh, beating, uh, they beat Southampton 3 1 the weekend, which secures them Europe for their first time. I believe in it, it must be, it must be in their history. Their history. Is it the first time in their history, yeah? That is so mm-hmm. excellent achievement, to be fair. <clears throat> I was doing an excellent job there. I think the Zerbies took it to to another level, um, which Brighton fans will obviously will be hoping it's Europa League football when it's not. Uh, conference league, considering that the season they've had. Um, but again, it's just that everything we've been saying about Brighton, we've, we've, we've all been on here praising them a, a lot. Um, the boy up front, Ferguson, scored two goals at the weekend. Can't believe he's 19. Um, <laughs> I just hope he stays there for, for a couple of years, though. I don't, I, I bet there will be someone uh, asking the question. I, I bet like a, a lot of Brighton players will touch on one of them a little bit later on. But um, yeah, how, how do you sum up sort of Brighton this season? And how do they, I think my biggest question, Johnny, is. How do they keep this group together and not let you know the money and the business take over and just you know scattergun it? Yeah, but I mean they're they're a selling club. Uh, I kind of see it a wee bit like you remember go back a few years when Southampton had that dynamite side when Wanyama and you know the rest of them were all there, and then upstep Liverpool and pudged everything Southampton held dear. Technically, it's just your team's fault. Will they are <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> I can see it. I can see it being very similar. Um, I you I'd love love for them to keep it. They've been so refreshing. I mean, they're one of the best in the league to watch when they're when they're at it. Um, and I include City in that, which is is a huge compliment. Um, the 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 young lads. There's so much talent in that squad, and you, yeah, you want to try it. You want to see them stay there, especially the younger lads. Um, but it is going to be difficult, very, very difficult. Um, same, I, I really like the lad Ferguson. I mean, he's been there for a while now through the youth. I think they brought him from Bohemians originally, and he came right up through the ranks. And he's big, he's powerful, and very, very good on the ball as well. I think, yeah, there's a player there, but there's so many in that squad you could say the same about. But yeah. Does everybody has done really, really well with them? Um, excellent getting Europe really well. The pipped Villa, so you can only really sing the praises so much. But yeah, I don't, I don't think they can keep that squad together. Uh, I just hope that they don't lose too many. That's that's the that's the key point, uh, Jamie, about Brighton. I think they they Johnny's absolutely spot on there. They're, they're a selling club. Um, yeah. And to be honest, when you, you look, they sold Ben White, um, even Trossard, you know, they're like, don't worry, we've got a replacement in, in Matoma. Um, you know, I think that there's been there's been a couple of others as well. That they've, 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 got an obvious, they've got an obvious model. If you go back two years ago, it was Ben White, and I, I can't remember who else had moved on. And, and then last season, it was Basuma and Cucurella. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so they do, they do 
they do allow one or two players to move on, but none of them have left for anything. I think Trossard's probably been the cheapest one that they've let go. Could Ben White was about fifty million to Arsenal. Cucurella was sixty million. Do you know what I mean? There's talk of um, McAllister's going to be signing for Liverpool. That looks like ninety percent done. So you're talking that's a sixty seventy million deal apparently. Um, and the, the other one would be the most obvious one would be Caicedo, who re-signed a new contract back in, in January, but has a transfer clause in it as well. So. They're obviously, they've got this model that's set up, and I think what they're very good with is using the scouting network, bringing youngsters in, um, and then forming them out. And I think I think they will get rid of two players this summer, and then they'll look to do the same again. I'm I'm a big fan. See the boy at left back, Astupinen. Like he's been he's been arguably the best left back in the league this season, in my opinion. Um, but uh, even the even the lad that's been that's come in, um, the the lad Steele. You know the goalkeeper. He's yeah. had a great season. Like he's just popped up from nowhere. Um, I think I, he's, I thought I'd naturally presumed he was like twenty years old. I think he's about thirty years old. I, he's been around the leagues for like God knows how many years. But it shows you that they they've obviously got an eye on these people that that, that they know can do a job um, for them. So I think there's a very clear model in there that you know will will improve players. Will move one or two on each each season. And we'll use that money to reinvest. I think the big deal is going to be to Zerbi. If he stays, then that means they're going to give him what he wants, which is money to invest. And there's a lot of talk that they're bringing in um, a player that I'm actually a big fan of, and it's the boy Dahoud. Um, but Dortmund midfielder, they get them on a free. He's a current player, and apparently he's a ready made placement for what, they, you know, if, they, if McAllister does move on. But again, those are the kind of players that they're looking to bring in. People that have started well probably dropped off, but are looking for a, a reignition of the, of the, you know, the, the career. So I'm, I'm a big fan of Brighton this season. I think they've been brilliant. Yeah, yeah. As you said, it's you know, for Brighton, it's keep keep doing it season on season. And uh, yeah, the hoop, the hoop, be great, great signing on a, on yeah. a free as well. That would be a, a really good signing. Um, and then obviously, I'm listening to one comment <laughs> both on, on Southampton. We've said enough times about Southampton <laughs> on this podcast. All I'll say is. Russell Martin looks set to become their manager next season. So I did see that, yeah. Good luck, Southampton fans. That's what I'm going to finish <laughs> on that one. Um, Johnny. Do, um, Mason, do we, can I ask, do you still believe James Wood Prowse will end up as Rice's replacement? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that's 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 a goer. I, I think it is. Um I think he's ready. I think he's ready made, mate, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um especially if West Ham end up winning the the conference league that means they're going to pop one of, of the Europa League. So um he's a moist I, kind of player, isn't he? Yeah, do, do you know what it is? We'll, we'll, we'll press as well. I mean, in terms of you, you would him and Rice, you wouldn't think they was alike in terms of the way that Rice plays for West Ham and the way that the War Prowse plays for Southampton. But War Prowse is so much more than set pieces. He's you know he's, he's work rate and the off the ball, which David was the first thing when he goes and gets a player. That's one except from Skamaka. Um, always, he's, always, he's always good for a yellow card, isn't he, James Wolfe? Yeah, yeah. Is, is, I, think, I think he's... I'll be very, very surprised if, if he isn't one that West Ham are, are trying to get in if Rice goes, for, for sure. Definitely. Um, but, 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 Johnny, Man United uh, won 1-0 at the weekend against Bournemouth. Casemiro with a match winner. It was a great finish, to, to be fair. Um, I see a stat today that really surprised me about Man United was that they've, they've only scored 22 goals away from home all season. Um, that yet yeah, they're gonna, you know, unless something drastic changes, and I know Jamie's praying that happens on the last day of the season, um, that they'll get Champions League football. But um, what have you made of, of Man United as a whole this season, Johnny? Have you been impressed, or is it just a case of, you know, they was it they was in bad way this time last year, and uh, I think that it's just you know. In terms of what they needed to do, he's, they've done. He's done quite well in the end. Ten Hag. Yeah, I mean, he's made a difference. I mean, we can't argue that. The league tells us that. Um, they're a bit strange. They don't really seem to blow anybody out of the water, um, or, or it's, there's no real. It's not really explosive. They just seem to do enough to get it done. Um, but I mean, Champions League football's progress, a progression for them. Uh, they're going to, I mean, it wasn't long ago we had some of them telling us they were going to win the quadruple, which is comedy <laughs> on its own. But they are, they are, they are uh, strange ones. But <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they've done well, taken nothing away for them. They've, they've signed well. Um, Cassie Miller's made a big difference. Uh, a bit of a hot head, but 
you get that when you have that kind of player. You have to accept that's part of it. But when he does play, he, he's really good. His goal at the weekend was excellent. Bournemouth, it was a bit of a dead rubber for them. Um, they did have chances, but yeah. I mean, I think that I was looking at it as well. I mean, for all the mistakes for De Gea that he's made, that's 17 clean sheets. And it looks like the Golden Gloves as well. Yeah. Golden Gloves, sorry. So, fair play to him. I think, they, I think he's underrated for Man United. Um, I think a lot of them want him to move on, but I think if he does, I don't know who or how they replace. I don't. I don't think they replace that quality as easy as I think they will. Um, but yeah, sorry. Back to your question. I think they've done well, and I think it's still progression for them. They're going in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. And and Jamie, um, Johnny's made a really good point there about David De Gea. Um, it really surprised me when I see it. But then again, if they're only scoring twenty-two goals away from home, then you know, and they're sitting fourth, they must be keeping clean, clean sheets. Do you agree with Johnny there? Do you think that he's, he's underrated De Gea? Can you see them going out and getting a new goalkeeper? And not just on De Gea, what else do you think Man United need to, to improve on? Uh, I think I think on the De Gea point, first and foremost, it's, it's you know, you look at the end of the table and you go, you know what, third, fourth, it's pretty, as you say, progression. But then you go back and you look at the individual results. They lost the first three games of the season, was at Brighton, Brentford, and I forget the third one. And they didn't lose one nils. They, they, they got spanked fours and fives. There's also a seven nil in there against Liverpool. You know, when they've been shit, they've been utterly shit. But <laughs> for some reason, they've kind of ground these results to it. And I think it all goes back to I think I think the Hayes obviously got the Golden Glove. But without Rashford, they wouldn't have had those goals to kind of win those games. And I think Rashford has been massively integral to their team. Um, so. It's been a weird season because as much as they've had progression, in my opinion, they're still going to get remembered for not winning a car at Colin Cup. is getting pumped 7-0 by Liverpool, which was one of the most highlighted games of the season, if you like, not even from a non-Liverpool point of view. And, you know, there wouldn't be many neutrals looking at that going, oh, that was, they were lucky or not lucky. It was, it was a scalping. Um, but going to your question, they need, they do need changes. Um, I think the drop off around about Christmas time coincided with Ericsson getting injured and Casemiro getting a double double ban for his double red cards. Um, and then when you're bringing in McTominay and Fred um, and you know all these standings, they're just a drop off in quality. And I think back to Johnny's point, Casemiro's actually been one of the not one of the stars of the season, but he's definitely been one of the buys this season in terms of transition of what he's done to that team. He's also popped up with a couple of goals as well, which he's not really famous for. Um, but I think him and Ericsson have been brilliant for Man United. Um, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of talk about the defense, and I think the defense has been all over the place. Whether Varane's been injured, Martinez has been injured, like Luke Shaw making doing a makeshift left back when you've got Harry Maguire. Not that I say he's any better, but you've got about three or four centre backs sitting on your bench, and you're putting Luke Shaw left back, and you know you're asking the boy Malassia, who to me isn't a Man United player, to come in, and, and it it just seems a bit all over the place. You would then add in the fact that this talk about David De Gea not getting a new contract, and you think, well, they don't really have the ability to go out and probably get two or three new defenders and a goalkeeper and more midfielders and a number nine. Like, you kind of got to pick your battles. So I fully expect them to give De Gea a new contract because you're not going to replace that quality for the amount of money that they want to spend on a goalkeeper. Do you know what I mean? He's been there for probably about eight years now, nine years, if not longer. He's... He's, he's still a good keeper. He's just had a few howlers. Um, but so is a lot of the keepers in the Premier League this season, you know. Um, so I don't think he's on his own. But they definitely need reinforcement, reinforcements in defence. I'm not sold on the Anthony thing. I'm really not. You know, the amount of money that they've chucked at him was at 80, 85 million. Um, People forget easy as well. They spent 90 million the season before on Jaden Sancho. So they've got two players fighting for the same position on 180 million. That's absolutely mental. Um, I don't believe Martial will be there next season. Velt Vegos won't be there next season. So you're talking, you're talking striker, winger, midfielder, and another defender. That's you know a good solid four to five players. So I don't see the hair going anywhere at all. No. No, but it'll, it'll be interesting. The one, the name that I see earlier and actually watched that game at the weekend, I'll come on to that a little bit later, was 
Brentford, the Brentford goal of David Rapp, is it David Rapp? Um, I think on a free transfer, I think he'd be a really good signing for for someone. Whether you can argue, is he better than David De Gea? As you say, the argument there is, is he better than David De Gea? That's, that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Um, it's, like, it's, like, it's like doing a transfer just for the sake of it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you prob- prob- probably isn't. But I think on a free, it'd be a good buy for for, for someone that, that are looking for a, for, for a new new number one. Um, Jamie, I'll stay with you then for, for this one because I know you love talking about Everton. But um, Mina, Mina with an injury time. Uh, 99 fucking 90. minute. I was, John, I'll tell you, I was almost <laughs> windmilling around the fucking house. Fucking <laughs> thinking they, they're, they're losing points and then it pops up with that bloody equaliser. Man, it had to be him, didn't it? It had to be him. The shit was, we called him out the week before, didn't we? For, for, yeah. for lying and you know, falling on his face and everything. Um, but it, was, it wasn't a great game for Everton at all. Like, Wolf should have been about three or four up. If it wasn't for Pickford, then that game would have been done and dusted by half time from the from the highlights I've seen. Um, and again, um, the the paperweight, which is Dominic Calvert Lewin, looks as always injured for like another two months, which is, you know, crazy considering what they what they what they need to do on the last day of the season. Um if they stay up, in my opinion, and I fucking hate saying this, it's because of Pickford. Because there's some games that he's absolutely dragged them through. And I don't mean recently, I mean if you go back two months, three months where, you know, they were kind of grinding out results. Pickford was the reason for it, even as much as of a shit house as he is. Um, but yeah, they, it it does look as though you know, Everton get any kind of positive result at the weekend, then they'll be safe. Yeah, Johnny, what, what did you make of that? Obviously, massive point for Everton in the end. I think you know, all they've got to do now is go and beat beat Bournemouth. Sounds easier. Uh, that than it looks as Everton fans will know. But for me, I think Bournemouth are. You know, on the on the beach already. I think they've they've struggled to pick up points of late. Um, but you know, it, you know, huge goal for Everton. It all things considered. Yeah, I honestly can't believe there's a good chance they're going to wriggle out of it again. <laughs> the, 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 the like the Harry Houdini of the Premier League. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's nailed. Um, a good chance. Well. We have Leicester, who are, I believe they've got West Ham at home last game. And West Ham are going to, I mean, they're, four days after that, they have the Euro Cup final. So they're going to rotate heavily. So that's going to go in Leicester's favour. And like you said, Bournemouth did look a wee bit sleepy in the last game. I mean, they did create some chances, but Everton just seemed to find something. They always seem to pull something out. That, that goal at the weekend was was hideous <laughs> just uh, i've wrote down the exact same points that jamie's already said um it's actually got shit house and block cap on <laughs> 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 uh, but i mean you, you, you have to give credit i mean the the yeah it's not a good place to be but the the, the manager they do it every year um and touching on a uh, albert loon i don't know where they go with that they have no cover whatsoever no. And the cover when they have signed it has always been terrible. Some of the players have brought in to try and cover cover when it's I mean just not up to the grade. And the, how long do you persist with that? I, mean, I feel really bad for the lad. You know, I don't want to see any player get injured. Um it's not good. I mean he just has awful luck. I don't know if it's the player or if it's just as we say, really, really bad luck. But they can't continue with that. They have to do something about that. Now, the bottom line is he's just not reliable. Um, but yeah, if they get out of it, it's, it's going to be some escape job and it's looking like they probably will. But for next year, if they don't sort out bringing in actually some quality, they're going to be straight in the same place again. I don't see it changing at all. No, and you're spot on there. Calvert Lewin makes such a difference when he plays, but you're, you're right, he's, when he's fit. Um, I do think Dash will go in and, and he'll, he'll, he'll look to change things. But in terms of Everton with financial fair play, the amount of money that they've spent over the last few years, mm-hmm. I think get rid of players that for me are not worth, uh, you know, you're not they're not making a lot of money back on what they've paid for them players. So it will be an interesting one, Everton. I, I do think they'll be in a relegation battle again next season if they do pull up, you know, stay up. What, just championship to the first division? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, 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 
So yeah. many times they overpay for players and then they get to the back end of the season, end up in the shit like they are now, and then they realise this in January and again they overpay and it's just a vicious cycle. And then eventually, as you said, financial fair play catches up with them. They're going to start, the luck has to run out. Yeah, no, you're spot on there. It might do it the weekend, who knows, but just on Wolves, that's five last five uh, home games unbeaten even though they did they did draw in the, the last minute jamie there's there's rumors obviously that that um that big jewels um could be oh, don't could give be... graham credit he called this out didn't he he <laughs> called this out like christmas that big jewels might not be there come the end of the season because of how well of a good job he is don't give him credit he's not even here <laughs> <laughs> um he, he, you know there's there's rumors that he won't be there next season uh, mm-hmm. he's not getting the back in um i thought it was quite interesting um what the skipper said, his name's uh, name's gone out of my head. Uh, heavily linked with Liverpool as well. What's his name? Um, uh, Nunes. Nunes. Nevers. Yeah. Nevers. Nevers. Yeah. Nunes. Yeah. Nevers. Um, you know, he 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 won't be there. You know, mm-hmm. next season he said he wants to go and play for a Champions League club. Um, obviously, that he'll regard a, a big fee, but if that's not getting put back in, and that's the rumours that, that that won't be getting put back in to for for him to go and get the players he wants, then. Can you blame him if he says, look, I've kept you up? I wouldn't say blame him. What I would say is anybody going into Wolverhampton Wonders knows that there's a model in play there. And there's a, there's and what I mean by that is like it's the owned by the Portuguese. The Portuguese kind of run that. They've they've got this this, you know, ninety percent of the players that they sign are represented by the boys at Jorge Mendes, you know, and his and his entourage. So nobody walks into Wolverhampton thinking that they're gonna have a degree of uh, say or sit or, or swag when it comes to making decisions. He's he's there to, to kind of get the team fit and put tactics in and win them games. So to now say that, you know, I'm not happy because I'm not going to get that money. Well, I mean, he was never going to get it. He, he might have an option to bring in maybe one or two players, but in the reality, the scouting's done for him. The team prediction that, you know, the players brought in are going to be done for him. And I think, you know, if you look at, the amount of Portuguese players that have come in in the last two years and then moved on. I think, I think last year was at the lad Trincao, um, yeah. came from Barcelona. He's now at Sporting, doing a good job at Sporting. There was the young lad, the Portuguese boy up front that had the Dave, David Luiz head. Do I forget his name? He, yeah. He played, yeah, but he, but he's again he's playing Champions League football. Like that, Wolves is being used as a bit of a stopgap to kind of give these guys a bit of a Premier League experience, and then they move them on. Neves has arguably been the only one that's actually kind of stuck it out um, and, and done really good. I'm actually a big fan of Ruben Neves. I think he's really good. There's really strong rumours, though, that apparently Barcelona are looking forward to looking into him. But I think he's only got a year on his contract. So in terms of a fee, I don't think it'll be much. But the talk is, is that Matias Nunes might be moving on as well, which is probably another 40 to 60 million transfer, considering they paid 30 last season for him. So again, there's obviously a model in there that this is what they want to do. This is how they want to move players about. Um, so I don't have a degree of sympathy for big jewels, as you put it, because there's no way he walks into that team and think he's going to get anything but that that kind of you know responsibility. I wouldn't be surprised if he just kind of putting the feelers out there to try and get you know try a, a power shuffle if you like. As I said, they've got a big striker that I'm a massive fan on. He's been injured all season. He ruptured his ACL in the first preseason. Um, the, the boy they brought from Stuttgart. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how he gets on because actually, see if you look at Wolves, the one thing they're crying out for is a striker. It's a big, a big number nine. You know, ever since Jimenez got injured, they've really suffered from that. You look at majority of their goals don't come from up top. They come from the middle, the, you know, the midfielders or box to box wingers that are running on the side. So I, I, I'd be, I'd be really interested to see how they get on when this boy, when this lad actually turns up. Um, but yeah. Back to your question. I've got no sympathy for um, big jewels on on that. I, I just think it's a power shift. I think it's just a power play. Sorry. Yeah. No. No. no fair point. Definitely. Johnny uh, Leeds is the other one. Then they they were beaten three one uh, by West Ham on Sunday. They went one 0 up, and I've got to be honest. I thought, right, here we go, Allardyce. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Allardyce is going to work work something here. But to be honest, I thought they were considering. They needed to win for me at the weekend, like we've said, you know, for the last few weeks about these things down the bottom. But toothless in front of goal, no real, real lack of quality. Um, West Ham obviously played in Europe on the Thursday night away 
out wide. I didn't think West Ham were great out there. You know, spent large periods sort of about the ball defensive. And, you know, they're already safe. I just thought that Leeds will, will go and get a result here. But <laughs> proved completely wrong. West Ham looked like they were getting stronger in the second half. And Leeds, for me, just got worse. Um, again, sort of same question, you know, as I asked about Leicester. But how, you know, are, are they getting out of this one, Leeds? No. No, I don't think they are. Um, Spurs home last game. I mean, Spurs ain't much better at the moment. But yeah, I would I would agree with everything you said. Um, they looked okay in the first half. Started well. They did create some chances. Um, Bamford has looked decent the last few weeks. You know, he's gone to good positions. He's he's um, balls into the box. He had a few on, on uh, at the weekend that should have been finished, but. Like you say, toothless. He was he he was actually okay. Um, second half, West Ham definitely did take over, and um, the pace got increased. Um, Pakita, he, he's such a good player um, for them. Started quite slow, but once he settled, he's uh, he's definitely been a standout for West Ham. He ran the game in the second half, and the was it the second one when he danced through about six different players. Uh, I've, I've watched it about five or six times. I still don't know how he managed it, how he managed to get through all of it. Hey, but yeah, they're the, I mean, they should be stopped in his tracks. He shouldn't have got that far. Yeah, if you have to give away, take the yellow card when he was outside the box. Um, I think uh, Big Sam touched on that as well. But yeah, I think it's it's too much to ask for. That, that was the chance. That was the game they had to win. You didn't want to leave it to the last game against Spurs. I think that was the one they had to, to at least get something. Uh, a bit like Leicester did. Um, so, yeah, I think they're done. I, again, it's a wee bit like Forest. I know a lot of people don't have a lot of love for Leeds, but it's a, a team I, I quite, well, not so much this season, but I do enjoy watching. Um, seems to be a, a very, very local kind of community club. I like that kind of vibe when I'm watching games. Um but yeah, I think to answer your question, no, I think they're done. I wouldn't be surprised if Leeds absolutely thump Spurs just because of the crazy season that they've had, but stay, but but go down on goal difference because Everton get a draw, for example. Um, I think it'll be like a four-one or a four-two or something on the last day of the season against Tottenham because you you know. Everybody's going to expect this pure edgy game. It's probably the only game to get a bit of freedom where they can actually just go. You can imagine, go back to what Johnny says, that they've got one of those stadiums where like, you feel like the fans are halfway on the pitch. And you can just imagine it being the last game of the season, do or die. They probably all turn up. Bamford gets a fucking hat trick. They play the best football this season and they go down on bloody goal difference because they've been that stupid. But the way they've been defending this season has been criminal. And going back to that that goal with Paco de dancing, you can't you can't dance around three players like that on the byline. That makes no sense at all from a yeah. from a defending point of view. No, no, you spot and, and Jamie just on that. I think we've said it before with Leeds. If they do go down, I think it's been their recruitment for me that that especially this season. And you could even argue. You know, last season as well. I just don't think. I know it's. Listen, I know it's tough. That they're not a club that's. Obviously, they can they can spend. You know, 30, 40 million on a player. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, I think they've only done it once, but they they obviously can do it. But what they have brought in. I mean, I'm watching them Sunday, and some of the money they have spent on players not been impressed. Um, and then the managerial, obviously, the managerial decisions they've made after Bielsa. Um, ultimately, I think I think we'll we'll take them down. Excuse me, did you see the comments from Sam? Um, there was comments in, from Sam about the lad Ruta, you know, the, the the 30 million that they spent on this lad in the January window. Um, and I, I, I don't know what the question was, but I seen his comment. His comment was, he's a lad for next year. What? That was baffling. That, that was absolutely was fucking mental. Bizarre. I mean, we sp- spoke to you about it a few times. Mm-hmm. And it, it, something i'm glad you brought up but i i just don't understand it they have been toiling and he's he's not been injured he's fit Mm -hmm. so i mean if he's for next season and you see something there then why the hell have you got your foot on the brakes right now when you are no sense no it's madness (laughs) and and even then no no you're completely right that's what you said when you look at it leads and you go right bamford's not getting the goals rodrigo's constantly injured and when he does not injured he gets the goals and he i i 
Rodrigo's one of these enigmas. I, I just don't get it. Like he's been around for years, but he scores all types of goals, and he and he scores them against big teams as well. You know, he's got goals against Man City before in a Leeds top, and he's he scored that one at the, as you said at the weekend. You go here we go now now they're going to turn up, and then they just arse collapsed out of them. But you've got a thirty million strike. You've got a player that you deem thirty million to bring in. I don't even know if he was sitting on the bench, but you've got Big Sam before the game talking about it. Play, was it playing in the Premier League is more than just scoring goals? He's a player for next season. What a fucking statement that is! That makes and, and that and that probably sums up Leeds United this season. Bonkers. He was he was on the bench. Was he? Um, he and uh, then. And it was well, is it McKechnie? He, he's already confirmed he won't be there next year because he's on loan. And you're like, no shit, Sherlock, because um, he obviously thought he was coming to play for Jesse March, who got pin got bin like the day after he signed. Um, it just it, Leeds have just been baffling this season. They really have. Uh, yeah, absolutely bonkers it, when it to, to let Jesse March make them decisions and and then sack him sort of what a week. I think I think he was there a week for 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 their their mm-hmm. red signing. And then and then they let him go, and then you've got obviously another manager saying our next season, but it'd probably be in the championship. So <laughs> yeah. he'll tear up the championship. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. Um, but 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 Jamie, I'll, I'll come to you then on on the on this one. Uh, Liverpool one uh, one draw with 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 Aston Villa. Um, do you know what? I've got to say, I, I was glad to see Bobby Firmino get a, an equaliser. Just as a, as a football fan, like, he's someone that I rate, rated and, and still do. Yeah, so, I've only just like, stopped crying. Don't don't step me off again. I've let <laughs> you He's, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it was fitting that he got his a goal and his last Anfield appearance. Top top player. I'd be interested to see where he ends up. But um, for for a Liverpool point of view, obviously disappointing not to to get three. You know, to get three points. It's I think it's ten games unbeaten though, but. You know, you needed to win to sort of put more pressure on, on Man United. And and do you know what Villa was always going to be a hard game because they've been playing brilliant in the last you know the last few months. We've talked how well they've attacked, they've packed, they, you know they hunt in a pack and they press really well. And we even said last week, John, that McGinn's been brilliant. However, see when they're playing with thirteen people on the pitch, it's a fucking calamity. That ref was an absolute joke. Like, you know, <laughs> don't start me. Like, you've started me off now, right? I, I mean, it was only a couple of weeks ago people were saying that Diogo Jota should have been binned after that um, after that kick on uh, Oliver Skip. Yet Gakpo looks as though he's been shredded by Werewolf. And he's like, no, it's okay. It's only a yellow. You're like, what? Like, that's absolutely scandalous. Ming shouldn't have been done after that, after that challenge. That was a pretty shocker. Um, yeah. However, penalty was a penalty. Obviously, Watkins bottled it and put it to the side, um, and uh, we kind of escaped. And then, and then, Trent does a Trent and completely avoids the person running in behind him, which is Jacob Ramsey, who kind of gets an easy side foot in after a quality ball in. So that kind of summed up our season a little bit. Um, but the icing on the cake was Bobby got himself fit for the final game of the season at Anfield. He came on, you know, um, I don't know if you noticed in the Leicester game, the, the, you know, in the, on the Tuesday before it, like 30 minutes solid, they were singing the Bobby Firmino song, season your, and he wasn't even in the squad. Like, that's how much respect that they've had for him. The, um, the, there's been loads of videos of his final farewells and stuff. Bit emotional, but it was very, very fitting that he scored a Bobby type goal. And what I mean by that is wasn't he a shit hot goal? It was a bit of a fall with a with a toe poke on it and it kind of went in off him. But he scores important goals. That's the thing about Bobby. He doesn't get the numbers Salah and Manny got, but he gets the important ones. He's been a great servant to the club, one of my favourite players in the modern era. Um you know, and I think Klopp said it well, nothing would have been possible without Bobby Firmino because he does all the shit that nobody else wants to do. Um, he was part of arguably the best front three we've ever seen in a Premier League either, um, which is obviously open for debate, but it's sad to see him move on, but I do believe it's the right thing. We've got like six strikers currently at the club. Bobby knows full well that not that he's not surplus to requirements, but he wants to play more minutes, which for that he needs to move on. However, I do think he's respectful enough that he would move abroad. He's not going to be in the Premier League, in my opinion. So whether he ends up in Spain or goes back to Germany, um, I think he's got a Champions League team in him. So um, he goes with all the best wishes um, from a club point of view, definitely. Absolutely. And 
And Johnny, on an Aston Villa point of view, then obviously disappointing for them as well that they didn't hang on to, to get three points, missed the penalty. Um, but overall, uh, uh, you know, since Emery's gone, come in there, I think if you'd have said to Aston Villa, look, you know, I did, I did just looking at the table there, I didn't realise that that uh, Brighton's goal difference is, is is a lot more superior. And even if they lose, I, I, they lose their next two games, I think that they'll they'll still you know get Europa League football. But um, you know, even just just for Aston Villa to get. You know, Conference League this season when Steven Gerrard left, um, uh, you know, no one would have would have called that. No, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think uh, Emery's done really, really well. It was kind of brushed at last week um, when he was here prior. I think he was really, really underrated uh, and got virtually no respect. Um, but he's he's getting it now. Um, he's doing well, and he's got some players who really weren't performing or were struggling playing at a much better level. Uh, like you said, McGinn is, is excellent. Ramsey's really, really good. Uh, even Mings, his game has improved. I mean, he went through a period where he was absolutely woeful and he was getting dropped, but he looks he looks much better. Uh, the game at the weekend was fairly balanced. I agree the the, the challenge on Gagpo was assault. It was bad. Um, that's what VAR is for. Mm-hmm. You can you can say it to the ref, look, that's it's a subjective thing, but that's where VAR should come in and say, look, that's bad. Um, yeah, again, too many of these calls come down to subjective. Um, when it's to me, that's black and white. That's that's a straightforward one. Um, but yeah, impressed by Villa and Conference League, still a massive achievement for them. I think they've came quite far, and I mean they were only just pipped by Brighton. It was pretty close. Um, so, yeah, I mean, fair play to them, they've done well. A wee bit disappointed with Liverpool at the weekend. I thought they would take it right to the hilt, you know, push Man United right to the last game. I thought they'd have a wee bit more. Um, and just echoing what you said, both of you, I really, really like Bobby Firmino, or Bobby. I think he's excellent. <laughs> um, I really liked him the whole time he's been there. When it was like him, Manny and Salah, they were, they were running riot, and the three of them were dynamite. Um, and there's something about him. I don't know what it is, but he just you like him. It's, he's one of these guys that's very, very hard not to like. So, yeah, I hope he goes on to something where he can get the game time he deserves. Yeah. And, and Johnny, just just last question on, on Villa. You said there, John McGinn, um, under, under, it's mad under Steven Gerrard, someone that's played, you know, midfield his, his whole career, one of the best, you know, midfielders. So it's probably, you know, arguably ever, ever play the game, but you know, he just wasn't. He looked like a completely different player under Gerard, and and, and then you see Emery. Uh, you know, the, the, the debate we I had the other day with my friends. That, you know, we got some Tottenham, West Ham, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, especially Tottenham. Do you, could you see that? Could you see that one happening in the summer? Do you think John McGinn's got another sort of big move in him? Absolutely, absolutely. I watched a lot of John McGinn, um, and continue to watch him while he, he's at Villa. Um, and in the championship when he broke when he came up with them. He I've never seen an engine in a player like I have in John McGinn. He he can 120 minutes and still give you absolutely everything. Um I think that happens with players. You know, the, you'll have some incredibly talented footballers who just do not click with the manager and it makes the player look bang average. And then you can bring somebody else in and it's like night and day. I think that's very much the case for not just McGinn, but a lot of the lads at Villa. Um yeah. But yeah, I think he does have a move in him. Um, who it would be, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I was I was watching, I was listening to an interview the other day, and it was uh, it was John McGinn, and what the reporter asked him and said, "What's what's Emery done? What's Emery improved in your game compared? Because he's obviously a well travelled man. What's Emery brought to your game?" And it was quite interesting because he said Emery's actually shown me how to look with the ball. He says, because actually, you look at the, the the British mentality, it's fast, it's free, it's get the ball, turn, bang it forward. He says, but Emery comes with a Spanish style team. He says, and they put the foot on the ball, they take a second, they look around, they look to play it. And he says, that's probably what I've actually probably developed more in this last one month, the last six months or so under Emery than what I've probably done throughout. And I thought that was quite telling because, as John says, McGinn's an engine man. You know, he's got that kind of engine into him. So if there's ever a player you wanted to run non-stop, it would be him. 
but he's now learning how to not to pass. That's the wrong thing to say. But what I mean is like to, to look at the game slightly different. Look for the look for that. You know, look where the runs are happening. Don't necessarily go with the runs. Look for where the players and 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 kind of include yourself in the play. So he's definitely taking something away from what Emery's teaching him. No, no, I absolutely agree. I both you know agree with Johnny as well. I think he does have another big fan of John again as well. I think he's a he's a terrific player. Uh Jamie, um couple games left. The the next one I want to come to is that like, again we just it's just been repetitive, but Spurs won Brentford three. Um again, you know, Brentford picked up their fourteenth Premier League win. Uh, they had thirteen last season and, and they've obviously got a game to spare to to go to go and better that again. Um how about this for a stat? The first time in the Premier in the Premier League in, since two thousand and one against Man United, where Spurs were leading at home at half time and then ended up losing. Um, so there you go, Harry Kane with an absolute school child. But but Jamie, what, what is what, I feel like what is going on with Spurs at the minute? Um, because Brentford did did turn the screw. This is the one I, I watched at the weekend. They did turn the screw, but it was just so easy to, to go and sp- score against Spurs and. Uh, mm-hmm. I tell you what, they, you know, I was listening to Jamie O'Hara on Talksport, and I've got my own opinions on O'Hara. I don't want to go down that route. But, um, It'll be for another hour. Yeah, but but in terms of what they need next season and the manager, kind of hard to disagree with what he's saying, though, isn't it? That's the yeah, problem. It is, so it is, it is. I just think that he's expecting to get, you know, and, and other Spurs fans. I just think what needed at Spurs next season. Yeah. The amount of changes and, and players and, and, and the whole football club needs a big change as well. Um, this ain't going to be changed sort of overnight. I think I think that there, there's going to be more days that that Sunday to come for, for Spurs ne- even next season. Do you know what? Like, if you ever before the game, you know, with the Tony announcement, if you ever looked at Spurs and went right, you're winning this weekend. <laughs> you know, Tony just got banned. You know, you think right, okay, that's Brentford season done. Um, they're obviously going to be licking the wounds a little bit. They'll throw in, they, they, they threw in this player that I don't think many people have heard of, the Shada. Um, apparently, they don't need to go out and spend 20 million because they've already got a ready replay, or ready made replacement. So you go, okay, who's this kid? They did nothing for 20 minutes. It was all Tottenham. That goal by Harry Kane was outstanding, arguably one of the goals of the season. Um, but from 20 minutes on, they just, they just. Os collapsed. There's no other way to put it. They defensively, they were just all over the place. They got scared every time a Brentford player decided to run at them. Um, even when the boy uh, was it the, the, the big, I'm, I'm a big fan of the big lad in the middle on Yeka. Like he, he, he's long limbed. He, he's very stridey in his run. He just seems to get on the ball all the time. He's involved in all the fouls and all the tackles. He, he's, he's just all in about it. And it took me a while to realise that actually Hoiberg wasn't playing. I had actually just presumed Hoiberg was playing, and it kind of made sense. He's their engine in the midfield. He's the he's the you know the the one that kind of looks to lead and and do all the shouting, and he wasn't there. Um, and and I, I think you could quite clearly see that and and Tottenham performance as it kind of graded on. But I've got another I've got another stat for you, Mason. So Harry Kane is the first player to ever score in twenty five different matches in a thirty eight Premier League season. And you actually look at his goal stats this season, I might, I might be wrong, but that's his 28th goal of the season. The golden boot last year was won on a duel of Salah and Son at 22. Kane, I don't know, I feel like he just went under the radar for that many of goals. Not that he scores goals, because he does score goals. Now, you're not obviously talking about 28 goals because Haaland's got fucking 942 million. <laughs> what? But fuck me, that's a start. That's a start and a half to score 28 and you're not even close. You talk, your team, are, what, I mean, what are Spurs now? Eighth? Not yeah, seventh? Yeah. Or something. It's, it's absolutely mental when you think about it. You go, now go, will Harry Kane be at Spurs next season? You go, why the fuck would he want to be? <laughs> like, like, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, he probably will be because nobody will pay with the fucking fee that Daniel Levy wants to, but... When you're banging in that many goals, you get you're breaking that many records, and you're finishing eighth. If that was anybody else but Kane, you wouldn't even think twice about saying that. Mm. Uh, I, I see that twenty eight goals, and I, and I had to sort of that's mental, isn't it? It's nuts, it's nuts. And, and, and you're spot on there. It's, it's cause Haaland's just you know coming and just <laughs> banging goals left, right, and centre that Kane yeah. sort of took a, a back seat a little bit. Um, I think the last two seasons have been 22 and 24 goals. Kate's fucking 28 and there's still a game to go. That's crazy. 
Absolutely nuts. But, but Johnny, just just on that, that was the one I wanted to ask you about Kane. Uh, again, the rumours go round again. I feel like this happened. It's happened <laughs> for the last two years. Spurs' last home game, he's going around saying, saying, saying he's good, you know, waving, and uh, people look at that and say, right, he's off. But uh, look, Harry Kane for me, he's, he's a likable guy, he's a fantastic player. He needs to do, in my opinion, he needs to do everything possible to get a move this this summer. He needs because I think for me, he deserves more than what he's getting at, at Spurs. Um, look, he's getting paid a hell of a lot of money. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that, but I just think for. He's always going to, if he stays at Spurs and he ends up winning nothing, he's always, that's always going to get thrown at him. And I, I think, I, I think he deserves a little bit more credit, you know, credit for that. I, I want him to go, go to a Premier League. I want him to win the Premier League. What, what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I agree fully. Um, we've been, we talk about it, like you said, season after season. I think it was last season was the worst one when it, they, they, it looked like he was getting the move and then it never happened. And then he went away on holiday and took a half. Uh, understandable. Didn't score for about four, didn't yeah. score for about two months or something as well, didn't he? At the end of the By season. all accounts, it was Levy who blocked whatever was going to happen. Um, you can see the frustration with sport fans or in regard to Levy and the way he deals with things. Um, so, yeah, he absolutely has to move. But the problem is where and who can afford it. And that's that's where the question marks come in. So I mean, we talked about could it be a, an English club, and if it was, where would it be? I think you're incredibly limited. Man City don't need them. Um, like I said, it's going to be a big fee. Um, adding obviously Kane's record and this season, like you just say, this is a phenomenal tally considering how poor they've been, especially in recent weeks. But um, adding your Hidden tax that goes when it's an English club to another, you know, they just the price just gets inflated hugely, and then add in a levy. I don't see an English club having the money. Uh, maybe Todd Bowley, he's mad enough to try, but I, I don't see that happening. But if it was to go into Europe or abroad, who could realistically afford them? I honestly don't know. I I, th- I think see see if see if they're genuinely honest about making this jump. It's Green's Newcastle because he would be the picture of the he would be the face of the team for the next three years or something. Like the, to make a statement, I just don't believe he would believe. I don't. I just don't believe he would make that move. But as a Newcastle, that's the kind of player that you want to come in, and and you know you go. This is this is so, this is a top four team. We now need players that can play in the Champions League and make a push for the title. You know, stay in the top four. You're talking a twenty thirty goal score, a goal scorer, twenty thirty goals a season, and there's not many of them about. Well, exactly, but but, well, well, the fact that they've cut. Well, the way I would say it's viable. So financial fair play works um, three years in 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 arrears, if you like. So, um, so for this season, they would never have factored in qualifying for the Champions League. They would have factored in maybe getting a push in the Europa League run. The fact they've qualified for the Champions League means I remember reading it somewhere that means that they can now invest potentially a further hundred and fifty million pounds on the team this summer. And it keeps them viable as long as they if they stay in the Champions League next season, it means that they're good for financial fair play for the next three years going forward. So you you're talking about if you were gonna go out and dump a hundred million pounds on a player to kind of make a, a dent. I mean, people talk about an 80 million on a Madison. I'd rather pay the 100 million on Harry Kane. I just don't know if Harry Kane would make that jump to a Newcastle. Yeah, if that makes sense. That's, that's a big difference. I think there's still a wee bit of uh, a stigma towards Newcastle, mm-hmm. even yeah. though they're definitely on this end and say they, they have a great plan in place. It's, it's there for everybody to see. Um, I still think maybe some look down their nose a wee bit. Not that, not, not that I agree with it, but I think there's definitely an element of that. So that might play a factor. I don't know. It would be an incredibly ballsy move if they'd done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, think... but it would take that kind of money. They wanted the Saudi money. It would take that kind of money to yeah. kind of, you know... I don't even think 100 million the... would do it, mate. No, probably wouldn't. Probably talking about 120, 130 million, probably. And Daniel Levy, knowing full well, if it was a Newcastle, for example, it's a direct rival. He's going to probably chuck another 20 million on top of that. But it'd be one of those ones that'd be factored in. If they do win the Champions League, if they do win the Premier League, there's another 30 million down payment or something. But, mm. you know, if, you, if, if you're that, I mean, everybody knows 
Man United need a number nine. Everybody knows Chelsea need a number nine, but they've got to balance the books to some extent. Yeah. You're going to be ballsy. Like Newcastle, that's the kind of deal you want to try and do. I just don't believe they'll do it. Man United for me. That, that's who that's who they should. Um, throw, throw, I'd throw it all at Kane if I was Man United. But where was ACL there? on the opening game? Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's probably, <laughs> probably what would, would happen. But yeah, but that, that's the one for me. that That's the type of signing Man United used to make. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I agree with Johnny. I think I, I think he's gonna Levy's gonna want way too big, way too mm-hmm. uh, unrealistic like he was with when Man City went in for. Yeah, if I'm honest, I think, happen, I, think yeah. I think he's there next season. I think he's still at Tottenham next season. I really do. You look at some of the press conferences he's given recently. He's talked about the project and the stuff that's happening, and there's just so much uncertainty right now with the managerial position, for example, that nobody knows where the starting point is. How can they go out and recruit? transfers where they don't not even just don't have a manager don't have a sporting director right now who's meant to be the person that controls those kind of things so so straight away it's like well how long is it going to take them to get somebody over the line and if it is somebody is it a project is it you know because they did that already with Nuno Esprito and that collapsed after about two months didn't it so it's it's I suppose I've got a weird one and the fact that Newcastle have done well this season and Brighton in my opinion means that Tottenham need to they need to step up next season or else they're going to get left behind. Yeah, yeah I think you can add Chelsea into that bracket as well. <laughs> I was trying yeah. to be nice, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. These clubs have definitely replaced them in mm-hmm. terms of position and form. And Yeah. Uh, spot on. Uh, uh, and Johnny, then last game of the, the weekend, we'll, we'll keep this one quick. Both teams that have planned for just, you know, waiting for the season to end both, especially Fulham. Uh, it was Fulham 2, Palace 2, both in the end of had decent seasons. If you ask their support, that's what they want sort of every season. But, Johnny, I'll come to you on Fulham then. Um, Mitrovic with a double again. I think he's a player that, that maybe uh, a few teams higher could could be doing doing with someone like him too. But the header was was an excellent an excellent goal. But but what have you found uh, Fulham this season? I think there was, you know, odds on favourites to go down. Um, so it just goes to show that the type of season they've had this year. Yeah, I think most people when they were asked pre-season to give three Fulham would be in the majority if the people were being honest about it. Um, I think they've signed well. The, first, the last time they came up, uh, they signed Dogmeat. Really, really poor signings and they went banjo straight back down. They've came up this season and they've uh, reinforced and I think it's brought a far better side than Mitrovic out. Because he has that support. You have Polino behind him, you have Pereira, we have Willian. I think Willian's been such a good sign in for Phil. He's really, really, really been good. Um they, I mean they were good at the weekend. Uh, I obviously missed Mitrovic. I loved his comment after the game. They were asking him about the penalty. Did you see that? They they asked him um if he was nervous because he had missed three in the last five. And he said, nervous. I've had two months to practice. I thought that was it. <laughs> so fair play to him. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a move elsewhere, I think that could be a good move. But there's always that risk well, you know, because you know he's, he's off his, his, his bonds. He's a, he's a head case. But it's a bit like Casemiro. You can't take that out of that side of his game or you lose half the player. Do you not think as well that that heady goal, like that's such a Mitrovic kind of goal? The fact that they let him go and didn't mock him on that, like he ran from the back of the put de- back of the defenders. He must have passed about eight players and not did it in the front corner. And you're going, it's Mitrovic that's playing. That's exactly what he was going to do. Why? How do you not? How do you not pick that runner up? Yes, he's like yeah. A, a, a memorable shout out to the boy at, at right back as well, Tete. I think he's been brilliant this season for them. He's he's been a he's been a great great we sign for them. Um, I think they picked him up for only a couple of million, and he's 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 done a good shift for them this season. Um, Bam with Johnny, the lad Polini has been brilliant. Pereira, who they picked up for buttons off Man United, has been outstanding. Um, I love the fact Mitrovic came back like this week and scored a couple of goals. That was he, he got one last week and he got two this week. It's like he's not been he's not. It looks like he's not been missing for eight games, doesn't it? Really. Like he's just doing Mitrovic kind of things. And I think that puts him at 14 for the season, or yeah. 14 in the Premier League, which is not a bad return considering, as Johnny says, if you were going to call out who's going to be in the bottom three, it would be Fulham. Who's going to have a stink at? It's Mitrovic because he never scores in the Premier League. And he's got 14 this season. Um, and he, he's, he's done it from the opening game. I think their opening game was uh, Liverpool 2 2. 
Yeah. And uh, Mitrovic, he jumped about 10 foot in the air and Trent's back and nodded it in. And you're like, he's turning up. And, and he's done exactly that. I think he's had a brilliant season, Mitrovic. Really, really impressed with him this year. He's, he's a really good player, Mitrovic. Mm-hmm. But, but Jamie, just to, to finish up, Palace then. Um, <clears throat> they've scored two or more goals in three of their last Premier League away games since Roy Hodgson returned. Me, you, Graham, Colin, all sat on here, said <laughs> for months, saying, "Where are the goals coming from for Palace?" <laughs> Roy Hodgson, the job, and um, as he turns up, Alisa turns up, yeah. Ayu turns up. You're like, "Hold on a minute!" Zaha yeah. goes injured again, and you go, "Fuck here they go!" And then all of a sudden, as he's like, "That who's Zaha?" You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just, just quickly, if, if anyone hasn't seen the um, the latest uh, interview I had with Gary Neville with with uh, Hodgson and, and the Palace chairman, it's definitely worth watching um but but how, what did you make of, of palace in the end and jamie as i said earlier i think if you give that to palace every year they'll, they'll take it that's the, that for me that's the type of football club they are that's the what the fan they just want but, to be in the premier league but you know what's refreshing though if you i mean i, I i've got the I, I can remember the the palace of uh, the andy johnson eras they've shagged that they've 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 they've, sh- they've sh- shied away from that that kind of stigma that was always associated with palace which was They've got the the small number nine, and it's like boot him, boot it up to the top, and let him fight it out with the defenders, and he gets those wee goals in the half turn. Palace have kind of evolved away from that, and it's more about a bit the, the link up play. Um, and then you go back to when Hudson first left them, they were always about a solid defence. You know, Joel Wood at back at the centre back, and they, they, they had a few players at, at centre back that did they did the hard stuff like um, you know. Like, like some of the old players that they bring up with them, um, that not necessarily big buys, they, they just got a turn out of them. But all of a sudden, this Eze and Elise have kind of just turned them into like an exciting attacking talent. And, you know, right now, do you remember, do you remember, was it last season, Conor Gallagher turned up at the end of the season, didn't he, and kind of kicked them on a little bit. And you think, right, that's the kind of player that they need to stay with them. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But you could still say all, day, all season, that's the kind of player that they've missed. They've now got these two wingers. They are theirs. It'd be interesting to see if they can hold on to them. I don't believe, you know, I don't believe people are going to come in with a 40, 50 million bids for them. I just don't believe that. But I think they'll be there next season. I think there was a big rumour coming out today about the boy at centre-back, Mark Guy. Um, apparently, there's a lot of talk that teams are interested in him, but I think that's going to be another £50 million deal. So I think if Roy Hodgson's going to stay there next season, he needs to keep the team he wants, which is those those players. There's talk Zaha's going to sign a fucking four, like an absolutely obscene amount of money to stay at Palace, which... I don't necessarily agree with, but I kind of understand that he's, you know, he's a talisman for them. So if you're going to spend it on anybody, you're going to spend it on your talisman, aren't you? But they definitely need to shake the the Matetas, the Edwards, the the Mullet, um, you know, the, those dead weeks, the Schlups, the, these guys that just kind of play bit parts in the season. John, don't laugh the way I say Schlup. <laughs> I can't help him. It. It's just a name that makes me giggle every time. But, 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 but you know what I mean? It's like it's it's those kind of ones. The f- like they're still playing with the boy Andrew. Are you up front? Like he's like nine hundred years old at the moment, isn't he? How the hell does he still get the game in the Premier League team? It's mental. Um, still but, pops up though, doesn't he? They're cool. But not all season though. That's the probably the difference yeah. is that they probably need someone more they can hang the coat on a little bit. I think. Um, I'm I'm actually quite pleased for Palace because they were so rock bottom when Vieira was, you know, on his way out. Um, I still don't believe Vieira sacking was the key, was the key to it, but they were just in such a poor reign of form that it was hard to argue with anything. They're just night and day compared to what they look like though. No, so ch- I'm definitely chuffed for them. Yeah. No, it'd be interesting to see what, what happens with Hudson. Ah, surely, surely not, but we we have Hudson, who who knows? Um but again, that's us uh finished tonight with with all with all 10 games but i am going to leave you with uh tonight's uh question johnny uh thanks for coming on tonight mate who is your manager of the year i'm glad you came to me first <laughs> <laughs> go on say potter i mean frank lampard yeah. i mean <laughs> I've, I've had, i'll be honest I've, I've thought about it all day and your first answer is going to be straight away you go pep you know, but I would say if he finishes the season by taking the Champions League, then you, you can't you can't argue that. If not, I'm gonna go opposite and say Desebre. 
I think he's I think he's been night and day for that club. And to have to give credit for what he's worked with, with so much of it is so many young players that have just they're fearless. And that has to be coming for the manager, or at least a big part of it does. So it's very, very easy to go to the clubs that are spending huge amounts of money. They haven't, and they've still I think they've been really, really refreshing and a hell of a lot of credit has to go to them. So yeah, easy answers, Pep. Yeah, I like to say deservedly. That's a, a really good chat. Really good chat. Jamie, uh, again, thanks uh, as always. Who's your manager of the year? So I can't say Klopp. Is that what you told me earlier? No, I'm always <laughs> <joking. laughs> I, As Johnny says, the easy answer is Pep. You know, to win that many titles in the fashion he's done it, um, you know, he, he has this aura about him that, like, like we talked earlier about um, whether they would take the foot off the gas you know, going into, you know, after because the fact they won it, Pep doesn't allow those kind of things. You know, he berates his players when they've scored a hat trick for crying out. He takes them off if they're on a hat trick for fuck's sake. He's done it like four times this season. It's ridiculous, but he demands so much. So you would have to be, you know, all day long, you would have to say Pep. However, I want to come away from that and actually give, and, and it's a toss up between two for me. Um, honorable mention goes to uh, the Bournemouth Muffs. I think he's been brilliant for what for what he's had to deal with and the budget he's had to do it and you know um, the the form that they were on, you know not to mention the Robert and the Graham, but I think Gary's been absolutely brilliant at Bournemouth. I really do. However, I've got to say it's Eddie Howe for the tune he's got out of Newcastle. I mean, you could make an argument that that was going to happen because of the money they spent, but. It's not the money he's spent that's turned up. It's it's the Joel Intons, it's the Almirons, it's you know, it's those kind of players that have already been there. I don't think they'll be there next season or they'll be as prominent next season. But I think the fact that Eddie Howe he's never had a race in a league like this. He's always been fighting for his survival, in my opinion, you know, at your Bournemouths and stuff. I think what he's done at Newcastle has been brilliant. But I, I, if if the Zerbi had been there for the full season, I would have said the same for as John. He's only been he he came in halfway through the season, so yeah. I'm going to look for over the season. I'm going to go Eddie Howe for me. I think he's been brilliant. No, that's a, a made some really good points there as well, and and I agree with Johnny. I think if Pep does get the Champions League, um, yeah. it's hard it's hard not to to give him it. But um, I'm going to agree with Jamie on on Eddie Howe. I think he'd be my uh, manager of the year. Um, you know, for all the reasons you, you've just said there, in terms of mm-hmm. the, the big one that you see it now on the other day, Jamie was he's made players there better. It's easy, it's easy if you've got money. Listen, as Johnny said earlier, he hasn't gone out and spent you know spent money, but he hasn't gone out and spent the huge, huge amount of money. But he's made the players there better. Um, and I think that's do, do, do you know what I think? Do you know what I think the biggest thing he's done, and it's not even with the team, he's got the fans on side. Every time you listen to St James's Park Lounge, there's no there's no protests, there's no berating. <laughs> that they're all it's like this, it's like a you know it's all in symphony and that they're all in harmony together. They you know, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing St James's Park on on the home legs of the Champions League matches next season because I don't think there'll be many teams that will want to go there with that kind of atmosphere. I mean, they might stuff them four or five nils, but Newcastle as a you know, an environment kind of thing. I think that'll be brilliant to see for it and that'll be so good for them. Yes, it's at the expense of uh, some really good clubs, but I'd be interested to see how that gets on next season. Um, but but the caveat to that is, I think that becomes a risk for Eddie Howe because when you're challenging for the Champions League or you're playing in the Champions League and you're going out and buying potential Champions League players, comes a different kind of dynamic. You're no longer dealing with your Joel Lintons and your Almirons and stuff. And I think, you know, he could go on a five-game losing streak and all of a sudden he's out the door because that's the way the Premier League works. Do you know what I mean? So uh, nothing's in concrete for him, but I think he's been brilliant this season. No, that's a, another really good point. It'd be interesting to see what happens to Eddie Howe and Newcastle next season. But as always, uh, thanks to my guests, you know, tonight. And, and as always, thanks for, for listening. Make sure you put in the comments who you think, you know, manager of the year or put us up on on anything that uh, you disagree <laughs> or agree with, because uh, I'm sure you do always. But as always, thanks for, for listening. <laughs>